Thanks, everyone. Welcome to uh, a webinar about writing a business plan. Welcome from coming live to you from Bangor, Maine. Thank you for joining us for this lunchtime session. We'll get going now. And the, as you noted when you came in, this will be recorded. And uh, if people who come in late can get a copy of it later. Uh, let me make sure my clicker is clicking. There we go. Just a couple of housekeeping details. As I said, this is being recorded. If you keep yourself on mute, that's helpful. But certainly feel free to jump off of mute if you've got a question. We're a relatively small group, so I can certainly take questions and we'll also set time at the end for questions. Uh, you can put questions in the chat. I'll confess I'm probably not as good at paying attention to the chat as we're talking, but we'll certainly cir circle back to the chat at the very end. But again, um, if it seems pertinent at a certain point in time, interrupt me and jump in. Now, who are we as the main SBDC or the main small business development centers? We are a, a statewide organization, part of a national organization called the ASBDC or the America's Small Business Development Centers, but we're the, the main iteration of it. And what we provide is no cost and confidential business advising to existing or aspiring business owners. And we run the gamut of services from startup to growth to transition and many things in between. We're all generalist and we have our own um, special areas, but the advantage of our network is I can tap other people who have strengths in other places that perhaps aren't mine. And I think as I say that, oops, sorry, you're getting dizzy. Um, I jumped right in and said, this is about writing a business plan. And my name is Ann McElhaney. And as I said, I'm here in the Bangor office. Um, continuing on, what would we like to talk to about today? Or my goals for today are to talk about obviously business plans, and I'll focus on two aspects. For one, why do you want to write a business plan? Because that informs what, what goes into that particular business plan. As you probably read in the descriptor, we'll take about 30 minutes to talk about this. If I look away, I've got a, I can't see a clock except for a little outside the screen. Um, we'll take 30 minutes to go through some information through the presentation and certainly there's time set aside. I'll be around to answer um, questions after after the end of that 30 minutes, if there's others that still are lingering, happy to take some time with those questions. Let's start with a little poll. Stephanie. Um, Stephanie's in the background. Stephanie's in our state office in Portland and she's here helping navigate some of the logistical details. So here's a couple of questions. If you could jump onto that and answer them from uh, just to assess where you are in that business um, development phase. Again, we'll take just a second for people to answer a couple of questions. And I think we've got them all, Stephanie. And we can see the results that there are uh, three of you who've answered that have an idea but don't know where to start. And hopefully by the time you leave today that you'll have a better idea of where to start with your business plan and someone else is in a different, uh, different part of the business development world. Okay, thank you, Stephanie. I think we can make that go away. Um, I think it's, it's off my screen. Does anybody else, is the poll gone for everyone else? Okay, thank you. Uh, that just helps me know a little bit where maybe to focus any of my, my comments. Um, there we go. If we're gonna talk about a business plan, it seems helpful to talk about what's a description of a business plan. And the description that we're using or the functional definition for us will be, it's a written document that describes your business. And granted, your business can be in different stages or phases of business development, but we'll assume it's some sort of written document that describes your business. Now, how it's written or what it looks like, a business plan doesn't necessarily have to be an essay that your 20-page essay that you're turning in and it's got to have a certain 
font or style attached to it is really the document that works for you and the purposes you need it to do. Then that's why I talked about what's the objective of your business plan is key to understanding what kind of content it might have. So why are you writing the business plan and who is the audience of that plan? Um, the business plan would be composed of two components. One is that narrative part and the other would be some numbers because numbers, dollars are the way that, that we often benchmark how well our business is doing. And in pretty much most businesses, having cash flow, having dollars come in and out of the business is something that we really need to pay attention to. And therefore, with a plan, we're planning for it and trying to think about what's going to happen. So the numbers to me are the narrative in numbers format, if that makes sense. And we'll look at some examples a little, in a little bit. As I said, why are you writing a business plan? Again, important to understand why you're writing it. It can have different audiences. I'm thinking if I were making a trip to New York City from Bangor, Maine, what kind of things would I need to consider? And you're welcome to go off mute and give me some suggestions or you're welcome to put it in the chat, but what kind of things might I need to consider if I'm headed to New York City? Any ideas? The gas price change. Yep, gases would be different in different states as I got there. But the, if I'm looking at gas price, that's an assumption that I am traveling by what means? A map to get there. I'd want a map as well. But again, the assumption then is that I'm driving, correct? Is there no other, another way I could get to New York City from Bangor, Maine? The airport. Fly. Yeah, <laughs> I could fly. So already I've got two choices that get me to New York City. And a business plan is much that way. Often there's several different choices of the way we can go, but it depends on a number of factors. If I'm going to New York City, do I want it to be the scenic route or do I need to get there for a meeting at this time of the essence? So that helps us think about um, how, we, how we go through our business, but you're exactly right. To me, the first thing about a business plan, it becomes a roadmap. It becomes a way to navigate getting there. Another thing is it's a way to test our idea. I could think I want to get to New York City by driving because it'd be cool, or I want to go from here to Boston and catch the train. But then I realize once I test that idea, I realize, oh, I'd really rather fly from Bangor because it's not that much more expensive than driving to Boston and getting the train. But it, I can test that idea once I start to state, here's some choices I've got, and I can work through those choices to reach my goals. Certainly, the better we test the plan, better research we do, better chances we have for success to meet our goals. And oftentimes, I hear one of the reasons people need to write a business plan is the lender said I needed to. If you're going for funding, lenders will look for a business plan. And as it says at the bottom, refer to it often and update it regularly. The business plan is not meant to sit on the shelf. It is very much a living document. But the other piece is to... Uh, to address is um, what are your goals for the business? And that's individual to each each person is to articulate what the goals are. What do you need to get out of the business? And we'll touch on that in just a minute. As I indicated earlier, and we talked about our roadmap, we need to do some research to help our business be successful, to help us work through some of the avenues and the choices that we have. Different plans need a different amount of testing, and um, that's really subjective to the plan. Let me see. Um, okay, uh, just checking a message. We'll get back to that one. Um, so again, as I said earlier, it's not really about a writing exercise. It could be bullet points on a napkin, but as long as it serves the purpose that you need it to serve, as long as it meets the goals and objectives of why you're writing that business plan, it's fine. What should your business plan demonstrate? And that's a part of why are we writing it? We want to make sure it's feasible and desirable. Again, what are your goals? What do you need out of it? It could be Maybe my reason for starting a business is because I've always really wanted that special luxury car. And as long as the business earns enough extra money for me to make those lease payments, I'm golden. 
but somebody else might need a business, same kind of business, but they needed to earn full-time income to replace a salary. Maybe I've got household income that covers the household, so that's not my worry. Maybe someone else needs to cover all their household expenses out of the business. So what's feasible for one might not be feasible for another. Again, stating your original goals for the business. And then is desirable. Does it meet the other pieces of my life that make it worth doing? Uh, just because I can doesn't mean that might be I will want to do this job. It's feasible, but I have to work 60 hours a week to do so. And I give up family time. So it's not really something that's desirable for me. So we each get to decide how we proceed. Uh, let's jump in a little bit more and do go into some more details of how we put all this together. Here's a diagram that's got a lot that's fairly busy, right? I can I'm sure you're a little overwhelmed looking at these, but let's take it apart and we'll look at the fact that it's got three circles. For one, there's a business plan, which is what we want to do, what we've decided the business is that we want to execute. And then there's certain areas that need to happen in any business that will then get reflected into the business plan. Now, what do you see in the center of this? What's what's the circle that's in the center of this? these three circles? Can anyone read it? Sales and marketing. Exactly. And I probably should have flipped it. I think marketing comes first before sales. But the core of any business is your customer base. And if you can't market to your customer base and then convert it, ka-ching, ka-ching, to sales, then you really don't have a business. Most businesses need some sort of transaction in sales so that marketing, who is your customer, becomes the core of any business plan. So think about who you're selling to, who's buying, why are they buying, and how will you get that message to them is a core piece of any business plan. And then to me, there's two other elements that go with it. Obviously, there's an operational piece we see. It's the doing. Somebody's got to do the work that makes the sales. Um, I could be, it's lunchtime. I'm thinking about pizza right now. So if I want to be a, a pizza shop or a pizza mobile food truck, somebody's got to be able to make that pizza dough, right? Or buy it and put it together and cook it so that I'm getting a pizza pie that I want to eat and not something that's all burned and tough. So who's doing those operational pieces? But it's not just about the making of the pizza because we're running a business. We need to account for certain numbers. Money comes in and money goes out in any business. As you can see in that uh, circle on the right-hand side, um, money comes in, money goes out. I want to make sure that the business is worth the effort I'm putting into it, that I'm selling that pizza pie for enough money to cover the cost of the ingredients. If I'm hiring people, I need to make sure that that's covered in my numbers. So there's different elements of a business. And then we'll drill down into each of those because to me, this circle represents, circle plus the business plan description represent the components or the elements of a business plan. Let me just check. Yes. Um, so the first thing we talked about is what's just the introduction? What is it that I want to do? Am I going to be a car repair shop that brings people in and I fix their cars because I'm good at that kind of thing? Or maybe I want to repair cars, but I'm going to people's homes to do the basic stuff of oil changes and um, tire changes that I can do at their house. So, so is it a mobile business? Is it a brick and mortar, for instance? What is it that I'm doing? Where is it located? And how many, for instance, how many, how will I be open? What days of the week will I be open? Does it make sense to be open certain days and others? It can include, the business description can include what kind of legal entity I am. Am I a sole proprietor, an LLC, an S Corp? Those are the ones I see the most. I'm not going down into details on each of those structures. We do have some other workshops coming up soon. We'll be the starting your once once a month we do the um, business startup checklist, which will go into some of those details. But you're welcome to ask later too. But 
how do we describe the generalities of, of what kind of business or service we're offering? And again, it can be something that's selling a product or, or selling a service. Once we do the business description, then we get to the marketing plan. As we said, that's that core circle in our business plan. Sometimes we think about uh, what we call the, the P's of marketing. What's the product or service? So what are we selling? The product. What's the price? Sometimes people say, I need to be the you know lowest price in the market, or I want to be hitting a higher target market. What's my pricing? Another would be placement. Where will the customer meet my product or service? As we mentioned earlier, for a auto repair shop or a pizza store, I could be either retail business where people come to me, or it could be a mobile business where, where I go to where people would be located. So where, where your place is, or am I selling virtually? So my place where people will find me will be online. So there's choices about how we connect with our customer base, depending on who that customer is. Product price, play. and then promotion. How do we get the word out to folks about our business and then keep them coming back? And this is a little uh, graphic that's helpful to talk about that. The customer funnel, and you'll get copies of this slide afterwards. You could see it better, but, but you'll see on one side, um, and I can read some of these, you might not be able to read that it's um, acquire, activate, then keep your customers in the middle. And then as you grow your customer base, you upsell, next sell, cross sell, and get referrals. But that customer, we often talk about the cost of customer acquisition. Once we get a customer and they like us, they know who we are, that's a part of our branding, our marketing, getting our name out there. It's important to keep them coming back. And I think about that mobile pizza truck if i can get them to come and buy a pizza maybe i want to sell them a bottle of water because it's a hot day or a soda or something at the same time so now i've upsold them a bit but then i want them to come back and i want them to bring other people so maybe i've got a promotion that um you know buy today you can come back next week and get a discount or an extra one if you buy five or whatever it is you can sometimes upsell and then also have people um, send people to you, get get referrals to like you on Facebook or somehow to promote your business to other people. So um, certainly Google reviews, for instance, or any kind of online reviews are a way to help get referrals and drum up business. One customer can recommend you to other customers. But keeping in mind how we get the message out and how we get and keep customers is a critical piece of that marketing plan. But as we said earlier, once we get the business up, in order to get the business up and running and maintained, then who's doing who's doing what? Some businesses will be just a soap, will be the only worker and we don't have to worry about anybody else. Some businesses are larger. So now we've got other people working with us or for us. Uh, are we hiring employees? Be cautious about thinking they're, they're um, subcontractors or they're contract workers. There are certain rules around the qualifications for being an employee versus a contract worker or an independent contractor. Know that employees have a cost. They also provide a service and help your business grow. If you're having employees, you have benefits. But to talk about that in your business plan is important. Uh, certainly in this day and time, Talking about workforce, labor, how I'll attract workers if it's a business that will need other people to help me is, is key. Um, any business plan will need to address the realities of what I'll need to pay an employee, offer his benefits or wages in order to have other people come work for me. Just checking my notes. Okay, the last, if you will, sort of section here in a business plan would be thinking about the financials. Money comes into a business, as we said, and then money goes out. And we wanna really track that carefully because most of us want more money to stay in the business than wanders out. And it does go both ways. We do that by what we call cash flow projections. And you know why? Some people think, 
I don't like the numbers. That's a lot of busy work, but it's really not and they're really important. So let me tell you why I'm on the um, bandwagon for talking about cash flow projections. There's lots of elements. For one, we talked about feasibility. Do we even think if we put all the numbers together that the business will do what we need it to do in terms of um, revenue, probably? If we need to go to the bank for, or some lender for financing, they'll want to see these numbers mapped out. As I said, for a lender, they will probably start with the cash flow projections and then go read your narrative. So the projections are really your business in numbers form. It can help us make decisions by seeing when we have more money in the business or not, or if we're projecting a growth, at what point we'll have enough sales in order to support uh, payroll and wages. It can help us budget. When can I get another piece of equipment if I get this extra work or this extra work will give me extra revenue will help me now afford to buy that extra piece of equipment or make the payments on that new piece of equipment. And certainly in Maine, seasonality is a real issue. Just working with a client this week who, if they buy it just before the season starts in May, they will they should show profit about before the end of the year. But if they bought it in January or waited until August to buy it, they've only got a couple of months of really good revenue and then start into that end of the season, winter season, where you're still making that full loan payment, you're still paying off insurance, you're still paying rent, but you don't have the robust revenue coming in and you could be in the hole those next months. So seasonality in Maine is typically really, really important. And also to look at those projections and say, if this is how things come together, does it meet my goals? Does it give me what I need from that business? Now, your eyes are probably right now glazing over at, gee, what is this thing? Uh, there's lots of boxes on there. It's overwhelming. Don't talk to me about numbers. Um, quite frankly, this is my favorite part of some of the work we do is, is working with this thing called a cash flow projection. It's really, to me, it's a a big puzzle and we just fill in the blank. And I encourage people to then take it just one step at a time. Often we start with this, I keep wanting to point to my screen and you can't see me do that, can you? Um, this section here called expenses. Those are what we call fixed expenses, things that don't change regardless of our sales. For instance, our rent, if we've got a rent, it's gonna be the same. And so those are easier things to figure out. Uh, we can make some good guesses about our utilities usually. Uh, insurance, we can go get a quote. I remind people that this is a cash flow projection and you need to reflect the um, the money when it hits. I think it was is when you when the money hits the bank account, it's revenue. And, and this sheet, when it leaves your bank account, it's an expense. So to say my insurance is a $1,200 a year is not really a hundred dollars a month. If you're paying it quarterly, then that means I've got uh, three hundred dollars four times a year. And you want to reflect it in those chunks. Um, I find uh, really if you have a building and you're paying real estate taxes, that can be pretty significant. If you're paying half a year's worth of a big real estate tax bill in March, when your season's quiet, it can make a big difference. So putting this together can be helpful to look forward and make sure you've got enough money when you need to have enough money to carry your business forward. Again, fill in the blank, making your best guess. I won't go into details on these. We have other workshops where we can follow up with you individually about how to put it together. But this is one of the pieces that a lender would need, or you should do even on your own if you don't need a lender, to help you think forward about Will the business do what I need it to do? Because sometimes there's surprises, quite frankly. Um, and it's helpful to get the surprises on paper before you launch your business. Then you can work around them. Um, look at my notes here. Um, as I said, not everyone will need to go to a, a lender for funding. But if you do a couple of things that would, should be incorporated into your planning process, even if it's just you, sources and uses of funds is important. What we mean by that is 
typically we think about that in terms of startup. In order to start the business, I need money to do X, Y, and Z for my um, uh, car shop. Maybe it's rent on a garage. Plus I need to buy some more tools. Plus I need to pay my insurance. So I need this amount of money before I can ever open the doors or my pizza uh, pizza wagon, pizza trailer will need, I need some ingredients to make those first pizzas. I will need fuel to fire the pizza oven and I'll need enough money to pay the, pay the loan payment on my pizza trailer. So I'll need some money before I ever open the doors and to know how much money I need. So I need equipment maybe as well as um, ingredients. And I need to know how much I need total and then know where those funds are coming from. So sources and uses, maybe I need $15,000. I've only got five. So I need to borrow 10 from somewhere else. So sources and uses to itemize what I need to get started and where that money comes from. If you're going to lender, what we call the C's of credit are important. You might not call them out in your business plan, but certainly the business plan should keep them in mind. C's of credit, things like, well, if I'm going to a lender, they wanna know I've got a good credit score. They wanna know I have the capacity, the experience, the background to do this kind of business. Um, they wanna know if there's collateral to support my loan. Does the cash flow even make sense? Or the kind of things a lender would look for in the C's of credit, and we would reflect those in the narrative. And then of course, as I've said, the cash flow projections themselves, that 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 spreadsheet, that template would be important to paint the picture in a numbers fashion for a lender. As we said in summary, then we've got this arc of a business description. And then I'll get to that in a second. And then we've got the sales and marketing, that core piece in the middle. We've got an operational piece that's really oftentimes us, what's me, what's my bio. Should have said earlier, the market, the management section really is highlighting who we are. What are the skills and the experience I have in doing this business? What do I bring to the table is really important. And then finally, how do the numbers flow in the business? And as it says at the bottom, most people don't have equal skills or interest in all three of those areas. And maybe you don't even like one. Now, maybe you want to guess which one I find people often don't like. Any thoughts on that? Or do you want me to tell you then what I, what I see? So what I see oftentimes is that people don't like numbers, right? They think, I don't like the numbers, uh, you know, but I can really do a good job of fixing cars or making pizza. But remember, just because you don't like it doesn't mean it goes away. And I say, not shame on you because it's not your skill set. It doesn't mean you have to go out and learn to be an accountant or learn to use QuickBooks, one of the common software tools. What it means is you need to know how to compensate for the things that aren't your skill set or your interest and not ignore them because sometimes ignoring them can be at your detriment. For me personally, I sales and marketing when I had my business wasn't my strong suit. So I had somebody else do it for me, right? I was good at doing the operations, I like the numbers, but that core piece in the middle wasn't my strength. So I found somebody to help me do that. And it's all part of the team. So who's the team that helps you? Whether it be the lender, the insurance agent, um, your accountant, um, legal teams, who is a part of that team that helps you move your business forward? Some arrows, okay. Finally, putting all those pieces together. You've got some ideas, you've done some scratching on the napkin, you've tested the idea, you've talked to other people, what then does it look like? And this is a typical business plan outline, just really the, the pieces we've talked about, business description, a marketing plan that can have different components from the competition to your marketing strategy, to how I'll advertise, addressing those bits of what makes me unique and different. Why will people come to my business? The management plan, which is often the first piece would be our own bios. What do we bring? If we need other workers, what kind of job descriptions will they have? What kind of benefits will we offer? And then finally, there's a, some sort of financial plan to talk about 
the projections, talk about the uses, how we'll use that money would all get wrapped up with those projections and some narrative. I tell clients that those cash flow projections are only as good as the assumptions that back them up. So you're filling in all those little boxes, but where'd you get that number? Again, if I'm a pizza uh, mobile cart, then maybe it's I'm thinking that I'll be at a strategic location three days a week. I'll be there from 11 to 2, and I'll sell 20 pies an hour. So that means 60 pies in those three hours times $10 a pie. So that would be my revenue for that weekend, and I'd multiply it up to a month, for instance. So taking it piece by piece to put it together. And then oftentimes a business plan will have some sort of appendix. It can be different supporting documents, such as copies of a lease. Uh, if you're in business with someone else, partnership agreements for my mobile pizza shop. Uh, what's my tentative? What's my startup menu? Do I need, if I'm applying for a loan, then what kind of equipment do I need to get started? So backup information that can supplement the business plan. It's always good to have marketing information ahead of time. Knows that we're ready to launch our business. Um, and then finally, for some of us, a sample is helpful. And there's, if you typed into that internet search box, business plan template, whoa. Yeah, you get overwhelmed. I would get overwhelmed and I've done this for a few years. I would get overwhelmed, but here's two that I can offer as uh, as guides. And certainly if you reach out to any of us, I'm sure each of us as business advisors maybe have some variation on the theme that's, that's our favorite, but one is ag plan. I'll talk about why ag plan doesn't mean you can't use it. And then writing a business plan is one that's on our own main SPDC website where um, there's tons of resources on our main SPDC website from our YouTube page with lots of other webinars to um, a guide to other resources. And just so you know what they look like. Again, this one says ag plan, but it is very robust. It is online. And there is a choice. It's not, they're not all agricultural plans. There's one that says small business plan. And the beauty of this is it can be done online. You can share it with others so they can come in and review it. I've done that with clients. Um, it's got sections and it gives some good tips and samples as you go through each section that might be, you know, competitive analysis. And it will give some samples to help guide you and prompt uh, your thought process. Again, any plan is always generic and you'll need to customize it to your own, but that's a, a nice way and it allows you to export it to a PDF or to a Word document at the end. So it has some functionality, I think. Um, and there's also this one that's a written version or we've got um, um, electronic files as well of writing a business plan, which is a step-by-step -step guide through starting um, a movie theater. So those are some of the uh, some of the resources that are out there, just two of, of many that you'll find. But remember, they all have these certain elements that will be in, in them and depending on your type of business, how much you focus on one section or the other. I've talked a fair amount, but to close, here's my contact information. Certainly, I'm in, as I said, I'm in the Bangor office. You can reach out to the main SBDC at our website. Uh, I'm privileged to be a part of a statewide network of really great business advisors. And if we can be helpful to you, if you're not already a main SBDC um, client, then you can reach out to the website and request advising. It's in the top right-hand corner of our homepage. Request advising, and that will get you to an advisor either that you've selected by name or you if you don't select a name, it'll go, you'll be um, paired up with someone usually by geography.